is shared between both the back end and the front end and the cloud. It all runs under Swift on Linux as well. So what does that actually mean though? Um, so just a very quick look. This is the app that I'm building on the right hand side. And the on the left hand side is part of the DSL that's used to, to draw that or to render that, pass it through. Um, and it probably looks a little bit like Swift UI. And that's because it was rebuilt in June of last year when view modifiers and function builders came out. So it, it does align closely to, to what you can do at Swift UI these days. Um, so that's another one more basic example. Here we have a uh, describing an object, a screen that describes an object from an API. And the key thing is that the front end, the iOS and the Mac OS apps, know nothing about the API. Nowhere in that, in that code itself does it know what an instance is. All of that's done on the back end in the desktop. So you can see we have a key path for titles, and we have a key path for the path itself, is actually the where on the API object to find this sort of thing. And so that's what the, the build and test does. It compiles it all down, validates that all of the key paths are correct, that we can't make a, a typo, or we've got the wrong path, or it's the wrong type. And then it packages it up <coughs> and ships it down to the, the iOS app on the right hand side. So that's great, but that's probably irrelevant to most people in this room, right? Um, so I actually volunteered to give this presentation in November of last year, and up until Tuesday night, I still had no idea how this was going to go or what I was going to present. So what you're about to see is was a, an idea that came to me two nights ago that was thrown together in about six hours. So it's not really a polished final product. It's an example of an idea. And if you guys find this, and I think it's actually really simple and powerful an idea, and if you find it useful, the sources on GitHub, you're welcome to take it and run with it. So let's take a look at a very simple, this is, in this case is a Swift UI view. It applies equally to UI kit, app kit, whatever you're building. But you'll see that it's quite common to scatter configuration stuff throughout your code. It might be titles, it might be uh, padding numbers, anywhere you've got a constant or a magic number. This is, well, it's not really a code smell, but it's, we could do this better. Something that we've discussed on Slack, um, this has happened a few times now, is the suggestion that we take all of those magic details and we put them at the top of the file in the constants enum so that you can easily reference them. Um, also very good, this is actually the pattern that I've been using as well. So let's add some complexity to this because everybody loves adding complexity, right? What if we centralize it? What if we put all of that off into its own config file and you just reference it from there? What happens then if we wrap that in a Swift package? So now we've added the complexity of having to bundle our Swift package in with the app bundle. We haven't really gained anything. Published on the App Store, we're still using code all the way through. But what happens then if we make that package codable? What happens then if we just publish that package to an S3 bucket or to a website? And then we just pull it down into our app at will. So with a very simple change, we can go from having all of our configuration information bundled into the app, we put it into a separate package, and we can deploy and consume that package separately from the code itself. And now you're sharing your code between your front end and your back end. So I'd like to announce Thoth, which is available today. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong for the rest of the night, I, I promise. But. Um, so Thoth is the Egyptian god of wisdom who was worshipped by the Greeks as the source of all knowledge and truth, which is exactly what we want in our configuration, right? The source is all there. As I said, it's very basic. Um, it's probably, to do all of that, it's probably around 40 lines of code. Um, and it was thrown together in about six hours or so. 
Um, but what you do then is you bundle and ship your configuration as part of your app. Um, but then at a suitable interval, you can refresh that config from the website, which means that if you need to make a config change, you can do so outside of your regular uh, app deployment app release cycle. Uh, we also cache the encoded version to disk so we don't have to keep looking it up all the time. Um, and because it's codable structures only, you can't ship code that way. You can only ship JSON that way, which means we don't run afoul of any app store review guidelines as well. So with that, just do a quick demo. I need to switch to hearing. Watch everything break. Sweet. So this is a, I think it's called Design Code. It's a SwiftUI demo app that I found on a example SwiftUI website. We just build and run that so we can see what we're looking at. Is that big enough for everybody? Can everybody comfortably see that? I don't think I can zoom the simulator very well, but. So if we look at our very simple courses app, it's literally one page, it has a modal, that sort of thing. Uh, and it also has just a little menu on the side there, nothing particularly fancy. But if we remember this bit at the top here, the courses. So what I can do, and it will get bigger when I add the editor, I promise, um, is we can take our FOF package off the disk, drag and drop it into our project, done. We have our configuration is all inside. Uh, we then need to go up to the target, add the framework as a dependency, or add the package as a dependency. That's it there. Cool. Let's just build, make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Great, so if we look, now I think remembering it's in the home list. Oh, thanks Swift UI, get out of the way. So this is our config information that we have before. We have a very simple header with courses text and a subtitle. And this looks pretty good candidate for centralizing that. So in FOF, and I apologize because I don't have Zoom turned on for this. We can look at the, the config. So we have a simple config file. So let's create. So what, I'm, what I usually do, or what I've decided is best practice in the last 24 hours, is to mirror what you do in your app inside the config so you've got the same paths for simplicity. So let's create a hope list.swift. And let's hope that, nope, oh, I did not start. Snippity, that's my fault. Here we go. And it does that thing where it doesn't preserve spaces. Cool, so we have a home list configuration item that's codable that has that information that we're looking for. We just pop this into, uh, we need to expose this so that the config option here is what's exposed into the app itself and what's encoded. So if we then, oh, there we go. So we populate that. And then back in our home list, we can, now because it's Swift UI and everybody loves Swift UI, we need to, I'm jumping ahead of myself again, so we need to import our config library fluff. Then we need to add our observed object. So we now have an observed object that has our config in it, which means that our Swift UI code will react to any changes that happens in the config file. Why would it change if it happens to do a hot reload off off S3 and the configs change, it will reload the views live. Cool, so that's all there. Dun, 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 dun. So we then go into our text here and we can say self.config. Wait, got to rebuild. Thank you, Swift. Dot home list. Dot title. And self.config. home list. Dot subtitle. Hopefully this should build and everything should be good. Yay. So just to prove that that act does actually work, if we update the home list to say, my mom, and we uh, insert a witty subtitle, 
we couldn't think of one. Oh, I can't even type. No, we got too excited. So let's build and run that again. Great, so we know it's hooked up. There's going to be an interesting bit coming up in a minute because I haven't tested my internet access, so let's see if that works or not. <laughs> Uh, great, so that's, that's a pretty simple example. Let's add one more slightly complex example. In our home file here, I didn't write this, it's not mine. Uh, we have our menu, the menu details. So that seems like another good candidate to, to throw into config as well. So if we go into home list, let's create a menu.swift. Let's see if my pasting tool is working, it is working. So I've just replicated what was in in the, the app itself, inside the UI, into the config. Everything here is codable. Um, and there's a very good, good point here that everything is a public var. Because if it's not public, your app can't see it. And if it's, a not, if it's not a var, it cannot be overridden by codable. When you pull down that file from the internet, it's going to ignore anything that's a constant or that's immutable. So let's expose that there by adding a menu to our config. Then go back to home.swift. I haven't forgotten this time. I didn't even advance the paste buffer. Oh, need to import off. If anybody has a good paste buffer for demos, I'm, I'm really keen to find a better one. Uh, so we can delete all of this now. Like We don't need any of this at all. What we're going to do again is add in our config as an observed object. We can delete that too, because it's not going to resolve. And then we can replace the menu there with, go to build, menu.list. So let's build and run that. Check if the menu loads. What happens if I then go in and remove one? So we don't like our team anymore. Great, so that's gone. So we're hooked up. So let's put that back because the next step of this is this is only half of the half of the, the problem. We want to be able to send it up and pull it down live, right? So to do that, um, there's my terminal. So there's a very simple make file. We need to zoom that. Um, so it's just a really simple make file that just has a few commands. Build, which will export the, just runs the JSON encoder over that config object, dumps it in an export directory. We have clean, we have test. Now testing is important, of course. Uh, we have Linux test, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then at the bottom, we have a deploy, which will take the contents of the export directory and throw it up to S3. Um, what was next that I was supposed to do? All right, we're just going to do testing quickly. So here's a test that I prepared earlier, and it's very horrible, but ignore that. So just a very quick test to say that the menu that we just added can never be empty, so we can't accidentally ship that down to the client with an empty menu. I think that's good, that's good, yep. So if we go back to our terminal, is that big enough, bigger terminal? Uh, let's just run make test, and this is going to fail. Yep. Clean that. It's left over from a previous build. Great. Yay, yeah, test passed. And menu is not empty. So the other things that we have there is just the straight make build, which writes out the config to the Thoth JSON. So you can see there's no real surprises there. It's really just straight encodable. Whoa. Um, and then we can, and this is, we pray for internet connectivity, make deploy. Yeah, it worked. Cool, so we now have an online copy of that exact same config. Um, and I would reload that, but hopefully you wouldn't see any changes anyway. So let's rerun rerun this. What have we got here? The menu. Cool. 
Great, so our menu is still there. So what happens then if your product owner comes to you, sweat pouring down their face, holy crap, we've got a problem with our billing, we need to turn billing off. You say, cool, no problem. Calm, collected, you know, at ease. We go in, billing menu, comment out billing menu, jump back over to our terminal, test because we're good people, test pass. So if we then make, make deploy, so we've now pushed that to the live. Now we cross our fingers. Oop, where's my term? Simulator. Let's just close the menu. Reopen the menu and it's gone. Without having to ship a new app to the app store. Um, pretty much running out of time now. So, there is one last bit to this as well, which I won't go into details on, but is in the repo you can have a look at is very simple GitHub action that when you push to the config repo, it runs the tests in a Linux Docker container and then just dumps the file into S3 if it's successful. And I won't demo that because it takes five minutes or so. But it is there if you want to have a look as well. Pretty sure that's everything I've got. That's it. So source is there. As I mentioned, it's just there an example. It's not really a shipping product. Um, the source on that is has the frequency of refresh dialed right down to one second. So you probably want to change that. Actually, I'll push that up. Um, that's it. Cool. Thanks, everyone.